How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm gonna to talk about what size power station you should buy. This AC50B is 448 watt hours. That means this can power something that's 448 watts for an entire hour. Of course, you have to make sure the device can output 448 watts. This one can do 700 watts. A MacBook Pro is about 100 watt hour, so you can recharge that about four times or so. Refrigerators might turn on and off. When it's on, it's 100 watts for maybe half an hour, and then it's off for half an hour. So on average, it's about 50 watt hours. So even with this tiny little power bank, you can run a full-size refrigerator for about eight hours. You want to think about what you want to run. This is a separate battery expansion called the B80 with 800 watt hours. Being around 15 pounds, I feel comfortable carrying it into the trunk and perhaps maybe 50 feet to a campsite. And that's probably the farthest I would want to carry something this size. Definitely not backpacking, right? You don't want to carry it up a hill, a couple miles or anything. If you want to pile everything on together, you want to run a laptop, a cooler, add it all up and multiply it by the number of hours that you want to run it. And that should be under 448 watt hours. And sometimes you want to look at expandability. The only way you can get energy from this thing to this thing, do a conversion from this 12 volt car adapter to XT60 or the aviation port to this XT60. For either of those options, this is limited to 120 watts. And if you do the conversion from aviation to XT60, that's a limit of 200 watts. If the power that you're using off of this is less than 200 watts, then you can run it until both of them are empty. This is actually a brand new product. The standout thing is this is one of the first times I've seen a grounding screw on a power station. Typically, whatever capacity it is, it would discharge it at 1C. That means the maximum wattage is 448 watts. However, this one goes up to 700 watts, around 50% more than typical, which is a little bit more useful. Right? The more wattage that you have, the more stuff that you can run. There's also two USB-C 65 watt output. The fact that it's flat on the top is very important because if you have the handle that's on top of here, you can't put stuff on top of this. Although it's not a feature that's you know, advertised or anything, you can just take a look and you can just opt to have a flat top whenever you buy a power station. Let me pull up the app here. I appreciate that you can use this on offline mode. Power banks have different kinds of connectivity such as Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. This one has Bluetooth only. That means you can only control it if you are within 30 feet or so. When you do connect to it, there are other features that are hard to access on the front panel. You can turn on and off the DC output, turn on and off the AC output. You can also change the charging mode from standard, silent, or turbo. Standard is 270 watts, silent is 108 watts, which will make it so that it'll be a lot quieter when you're charging it. Sometimes it's very, very noisy and you don't want it to be buzzing around in the same room that you are in. And then there's also turbo mode, which charges at 580 watts. There's other stuff like power lifting mode, which allows you to momentarily go up to a thousand watts for resistive loads. It's only for a brief moment that you can go over to 700 watts. It's best to look at this as a 700 watt output device. There's eco mode, which will power itself off if the outputs are very low wattage. This can help save the battery so you don't drain it completely. The eco mode is adjustable between 10 and 30 watts. So let's just put 10 over here. And then the DC is adjustable between five and 10 watts. And also you can set a timer. If it's below a certain wattage for a certain amount of time, let's say four hours on both of these right now, then it would shut down. There's also auto sleep. Sometimes you don't want it to sleep at all because you just want the front display to be on the whole time. Or you might not want the eco mode on either because sometimes you have stuff that uses very, very little current, but you want them to stay on, let's say throughout the night. I really appreciate how they bury the AC output frequency. This is something that you don't want to change at all. Grid self-adaptation. Even if the input voltage is not normal, it can still charge the power station. It also says there's dual layer of plastic to make it extra rugged. Sometimes when I have really cheap power banks, if I touch the sides, they do bend in. This one seems like it doesn't push in too badly. A little bit of gift here and on the top, 
but not much. This charging at 734 watts. I was able to do it for two minutes before it cut off. It should have been okay because it was only a little bit over 700 watts. So I stepped it down to 634 watts to discharge the rest of the way. And I got 376 watt hours of usable capacity, which is 83.9% usable capacity. Turning on the AC here, doing all this conversion from the DC battery into alternating current, it uses 16% of the capacity. Pretty typical. And if you want to be a little bit more efficient, always try to use the 12 volt output. Discharging at 120 watts, I was able to get 405 watt hours, which represents a usable capacity of 90.4%. So you save about three and a half percent just coming out of here instead of the AC. I did a recharge test on it right away after that. And even on turbo mode, it kind of throttled itself at 378 watts. It was supposed to go up to 580 watts, right? So it slowed down a little bit because it was too hot. In that case, it charged in 86 minutes and 59 seconds. It was supposed to go from zero to 100% in 70 minutes. So it took a little bit longer and it used 119.8% of the capacity, the wall. So going from the wall back into the battery costs about 20% extra energy. There's AC conversion losses and this is also very typical. So then I let it cool down overnight and then started a full charge again. On turbo mode on 578 watts, it was able to charge 80% in 45 minutes and two seconds, which is exactly what the advertised speed is. Zero to 100% is 62 minutes and 38 seconds. They advertised at 70 minutes. So it's a little bit faster than what they advertise for zero to 100%. This is a 16 gauge AC cable. Many cheaper power banks have an AC adapter. You know why though? Because anytime you have AC going straight into the device, you actually have to get certification for the entire thing. This is a lot more convenient, of course, because you don't have to carry a brick around with you. All of that adapter stuff is built in into the device. Comes with this MC4 to XT60 cable. These are the solar inputs and this connector goes straight in there. Whatever solar panel that you connect to it, you want to look at the highest voltage that it could ever generate, which is the open circuit voltage, and it needs to be less than 28 volts. At the same time, you also want the total wattage to be less than 200 watts. If you have, let's say, something that's a little bit bigger, 220 watts, 250 watts, it will work as long as it's pumping out less wattage than this thing can accept. However, let's say you get like some very, very strong sun all of a sudden, it could push that over and it could cause damage to this device. Also comes with a 12 volt to XT60 connector cable and that will allow you to charge through the same connector as the solar input. Personally, I like all the inputs to be on the same side and grouped all together. You got AC output here, DC output, DC car adapter output, but then the DC and solar input is right here and the AC input is over here. There's nothing on the other side. Not too big a deal if you recognize where things go. Some power banks allow the charging via the USB-C in. If that's a useful feature for you, you might want to look out for that, but this one doesn't do it. It's only USB-C out, no in. Inside there's a 10 amp, 250 volt fuse. There's an extra one built in if you need it. Two 700 watt pure sine wave AC output, a DC car adapter output that goes up to 120 watts, two USB-C and one USB-A port. Two USB-A can go up to 65 watts and the USB-A can go up to 15 watts. You have your XT60 DC or solar panel input. It can go from 12 to 28 volts. 8.5 amps, 200 watts max. Press and hold this button to turn it on. There's the capacity that's left here. Not all power banks shows both input and output wattage. And when you connect via Bluetooth, this Bluetooth icon will turn on. This little triangle is for turbo charging mode. So if you plug in the AC, it'll charge very fast at 580 watts. On the bottom, you gotta appreciate the rubber feet. I have seen power stations without these. That's why I point them out. And on the back bunch of input output information, battery capacity. This is actually very useful if you don't want to pull up the instruction manual all the time.
It is very thick plastic. I like how the circuit boards are so nice and clean and green and shiny. They have their own logo, so they designed their own boards. The battery is all contained in the lower one third. So all the weight is towards the bottom, lower center of gravity. Plenty of electronics, very nice and heavy. You have these really large inductors over here. This power bank can work in UPS mode, which allows you to turn on the AC and all the power will come from the grid and not draw power from the battery. If you pull the plug, it'll quickly switch to battery power so that the power going to the things connected to it will be uninterrupted. I'm gonna unplug this to see how long it takes for the switch over to happen. Unplug. Stop, it's right here. The voltage went to zero and the difference between this and this cursor is about 20 milliseconds. That's right on the specification. And then the AC output starts up again. This is generated from the battery. It appears to overshoot slightly over here by some 28 volts or so momentarily just for one cycle. And then it settles down in the next cycle. So let's plug it back in. And when you reconnect it, there's actually no discontinuity. There's a slight dip in voltage over here. It's around eight volts or so for a duration of maybe a half a second, essentially uninterrupted when the power comes back on. Let's do that again. Watch this light as I unplug it. You might be able to see it flicker. There, it's very slight. And then we plug it back in and it flickered a little bit less. Hope this video helps you find which power station is for you. If you guys are interested in this particular power station or this expansion battery, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.